All right, so I've got my power supply fully complete, and uh, I'm ready to go. I'm going to start doing the first big piece, and that's going to be this base here. I'm going to go ahead and set that in there today. Um, so the first thing is going to be adding this washing soda here. And once again, I'm just going to do a ratio of about one tablespoon for every gallon of water. Well, what I'm going to clean this time is this bottom piece, and you can see it's pretty rusty, so we should get some good results, or at least see if this works well with this piece. Once again, I'm just going to put my bar up here. Now, I want to try something a little bit different this time. Instead of having the piece um, hanging in by a wire and having the wire in the water as well, I'm actually just going to keep a piece of this exposed. I'm just going to keep uh, maybe like one of these uh, bolt holes exposed and then just hook the power directly onto it to see if I get a little bit better of a reaction. All right, so there it is. I've kind of got it hanging by one of the, uh, the bolt holes. And like I said, I'm going to hook it directly up to the piece. So I'm going to hook up my positive lead. Got a little bit of a longer screw, so it's much easier to attach it. There we go. And then I'm going to hook it this this black lead directly up to it like that. Get a nice good connection there. And basically, I'm going to add a little bit more water so that so that it gets probably up to about here, like right below where the uh, this um, this cord is. We're nice and centered. Um, we're connected, positive, negative. Power supply is on. And we got power. Bubbles are already starting to form. Very nice. You can see they're forming on the piece a little bit better than they were previously. And you can also see that the closer they are to the electrodes, the faster the reaction is. So what I'm going to do is uh, about every hour, every every two hours or so, I'm going to rotate this piece a quarter turn so that you know this piece is going to get cleaned as well. And uh, yeah, just going to let it go for a little bit. All right, so here we are. It's been about 24 hours, uh, a little bit longer than I wanted or is probably necessary you can see there's there's a good amount of sludge but probably not significantly more than yesterday let's turn the power supply off and i'm going to pull this thing out just rinse it off a little bit or shake it off a little bit Just keeping it wet, and now I'm just gonna drip some baking soda all over it. It's starting to look, look pretty good. finished scouring this thing you can see it's looking a lot better here you can see bare, bare metal pretty much everywhere still got a few rust spots here I think this is the one that was exposed maybe so I'm gonna go over a little uh, some of these edges one more time Keep it wetted for now. 
And uh, what I'm going to do is make a little bit of a solution. around a little bit. It's just a kind of a paste. They're a little bit easier to get with a brush. And we'll see if there's any difference before and after by doing this. I'm going to rinse it off and see what we got. You see all the gunk that still came off of there. This toothpaste just has kind of uh, really small granules. I got the whitening part. And same with the baking soda. And it's just going to clean the, uh, the surface off a little bit better. I recommend those using a brass brush, not a steel one, just because it's uh, you know non scoring. I'm just kind of going over it with my hand, getting the rest of the. Uh, Toothpaste and stuff off. You can use a microfiber cloth that I have. Wipe this off. You don't want to use paper towels and stuff like that just because you can get fibers stuck on the metal, especially if you have any jagged metal and stuff like that. It also dries pretty well. So anyway. I'm finished drying this and then I'm going to take it out to the garage and spray some rusted paper on there. So here's the next electroplating process. This is a multi-part part or a multi-part process. As you can see, I have the end piece, the other part of the swivel base, and that end cap again in here. And they're all connected electrically. Um, this part, the swivel base, I have connected directly to uh, the ground wire, as I had before. And that part, including the wire, is not in the water, once again. The other two parts are a little bit more difficult I had to connect these um, via the aluminum, basically. So this this is a, a red. This has a red handle, but it's actually connected to the ground. You can see that. I just didn't have any more black ones. Uh, but anyway, so the aluminum rod is energized in this case. So that's how that's how the current will flow through this end piece and also this cap once I turn it on. Uh, the cap I have to fully submerge because I can't really, uh, I can't attach it very well. So I'm just gonna have to submerge that one and see how it goes. So here we are after about three, probably closer to four hours. I'm gonna turn the power supply off. Actually, I'm gonna leave these cables on there. Yeah, that, the cap is looking real good. I'm going to take these out one at a time and uh, clean them off. I'm going to go with the uh, cap first. And then I'm just going to turn it back on while I'm cleaning the cap. All right.
right, here they all are done. Here's the swivel base. Now, I can't get very well down in those holes, so at the very corners, there's still a little bit of rust. That one's better, but you can still see some in there, so I'm going to have to uh, get another brush or something to get down in there a little bit better. Here's the end piece. This one wasn't too terribly bad to begin with, so it didn't need a whole lot. And then I redid the cap a little bit. Okay, so the next batch of stuff is going to go in. You can see I've got this kind of a setup going. Looks a little bit like a modern art sculpture or something like that, but there it is. These are all the small pieces, the screws, and all that other kind of stuff. Um, just kind of have it attached to wire and hanging there. I'm going to energize this bar again like I did previously. And I'm also going to do the casing nut. Uh, I had to clean out as much anti seize as I could, but it should be good to go. So I'm just going to show you the best way that I found of mixing this washing soda in. And that is by simply, it's not going to work, dumping about half of the water in and then mixing all the washing soda into the remaining uh, water in the bucket and then pouring the rest in it and mixing it up like that. Okay, so I've got about half of my water in there, half in the bucket, and I just added my washing soda and I just find it a lot easier to get it all mixed up and stuff in, in a bucket. You can get a little bit more aggressive with it. And I just find it a lot easier than doing it, you know, in the container with all the other crap. There we go. And that looks pretty well dissolved. Usually if you do it in there, you know, it kind of collects along the corners and edges and stuff like that. And this seems to be a lot more consistent. And then all I'm going to do is I'm just going to dump it in. There we go. You can see there's, you know, not much left in the bucket. So all I need to do now is just give it a couple stirs just to mix the water up evenly. And that should be good. The power supply is fully connected. I have one thing energizing everything on the bar, and then the casing nut is just connected separately. Once again, it's a red adapter, but it's it's hooked into the, the ground wire, so that's all good. Positive lead is connected, and I'm just going to turn it on and make sure everything's bubbling, make sure it's electrically connected. All right, so I've had this going overnight. There's actually no rust on the top. It's all sunk to the bottom. I'll show you what I have left in here. Uh, this is the stuff that was still kind of dirty last night, but yep, just gonna clean the rest of that stuff off. You can see they have a bit of a film on them. It's because I, I'd switched from WD-40 to this fluid film. It seems to offer much better protection because as I noted before, this one was starting to rust again. It's, you can see that brownish film on there. So I wanted to try something a little bit better. And uh, yeah, everything's cleaned up pretty well. Can't see it as well under all the gunk, but everything looks pretty, pretty nice. I'll wipe all that excess off before I uh, reinstall it. But these pieces, this one, the cap, the, and both parts of the, the base have WD-40 on them. All right, here's the next thing. I've got the lead screw in there, and I'm about to switch on the power. So what I did is I put one of those little uh, PVC insulators there, just to, and I basically have it propped up on these uh, plates. So I've got everything hooked up. I'm just about to turn it on. I got as much of that anti-seize off of there as I could, but man, that stuff is annoying. Got some bubbles forming. All right, and 
here's the other part of the screw. Zoom. Okay. All right. Here's the other part of the screw. So I did. I did the top half, or the part sticking out earlier. You can see I've already looped it up and everything, so that it doesn't uh, flash rust or anything. And I've also got the first part of this uh, dynamic jaw in there, the bottom part. And I've got everything hooked up. I basically used the bottom of a, a chair that I that was already broken to kind of prop this thing up a little bit. Anyway, I'm going to flip the switch. And we should start seeing some bubbles. There's definitely some there already. The part that's closest to the plates always starts going a lot faster. It's taking a little bit more energy for this one to go, but I think I'm going to have to use a bigger container tomorrow to get the rest of this thing. And also that part because it's virtually touching the plates when I put it in there. I tried putting this in laying down and the jaws are so wide, they're eight inches and this is like a nine inch tub. So they're almost touching the plates. And so if I were to turn the power on, it would start going nuts at the edges like that. And, uh, Just afraid most of the energy is going to go out of the jaw um, and I won't get a whole lot of surface area. You can see how there's very little activity on the jaw right now and that's because most of the energy is taking the least resistive path and is just going out the sides of this um, lead screw handle because they're so close to the edge there. So when you set up a, an electrolysis tank, you want you want the plates to be as close to equidistant as you can from all the surface area of your piece. That's a, an ideal situation, but that's the design methodology. And I apologize for my voice. I uh, came down with a cold last night, so... That's why I sound a little weird, but there we go. Just going to let that go overnight and check again on it tomorrow. All right, here we are the morning after. This is the dynamic jaw, um, partially cleaned. The water line of the tank basically went up to about there. This is after using my brass wire brush and some uh, the scotch pad and everything. You can see it's cleaned up significantly. There's still some black patches here that are kind of rough. So I'm going to wire wheel that off a little bit as well. I'm just kind of feeling along here for any uh, abnormalities. And so it's usually where these black parts are. But yeah, that feels smooth all the way down. Just have a couple of spots that I need to fix up. Right there too, a little bit along that jaw. So yeah, looking pretty good. It's gonna do a little bit of touch-up work, and then I'm gonna do the other side. I still have to pull the spindle out, but uh, yeah, it's looking pretty good so far. All right, here's the rest of the power the power screw. Uh, as you can see, it cleaned up pretty well. Let's see if I can zoom there. There we go. I just put some wax paper over the end that was already uh, uh, greased up just to keep it from getting all over the place. You can see the condition of it's pretty well, or pretty good. I have a little bit of difficulty getting in that groove there, but that's okay. This is actually metal damage. I thought this may have been paint or something, but looks like the metal has actually been etched away chemically there. You can see the flash rust already starting to form right there. All right, new container, and I'm all set up again. Um, 
when you buy containers, make sure you get the, the clear ones. I've had a lot more success with the clear version than the other ones. They just shatter. Um, these are a lot more uh, flexible, so you don't get the, uh, the cracks in the bottom. So in this case, I changed it up a little bit. My rebar was too short, so I had to do kind of jerry-rig it a little bit. So it's still attached to this plate, and this plate is still running 5 volts. Um, so this plate and the rebar are going to be 5 volts. It's not connected to this other plate. It's just hanging there. This plate, this plate, and the other one are going to be 12 volts. And then I'm just going to connect the piece right here. And the water level is going to go to just below that. So now I just need to throw the water in there and I'll be ready to go. And bubbles. So we got about six and a half amps on the 12 volt line, about half an amp on the five volt line. So a total about seven amps, not too shabby. I'm pretty happy with that. And now I'm gonna pull the dynamic jaw out. Let's see, it's looking a lot better already, but I'm gonna have to clean that off still. Let's see what we got here. Yeah, most of this stuff should just wipe off pretty easily. It's pretty good. Let's look at the inside. Oops. This is where the rebar was. That looks pretty good, actually. All right, the last part of the vise is in here. Uh, it's been going for about 12 hours now. It doesn't have that copper froth on the top. Uh, that usually kind of sinks to the bottom. You can see this, the amount of sediment on the bottom there. I found that this kind of frothy stuff kind of settles to the bottom overnight. Uh, but you can still, the bubble, you can see the bubbles are still going pretty strongly there. Um, and like I said, I just attach it to a little part sticking out. So I'm going to take it out, clean it off, uh, change all the water out and stuff like that, and then uh, flip it over and probably let it go for another 12 hours or so, and then it should be done by then. All right, so uh, here we go. I'm going to pull it out. That's warm. There we go. Already looking better. Now I'm going to just kind of uh, do my same cleaning method. That's kind of what it looks like. So, I'm going to need to clean all this off. It's pretty nasty. You can see the plates are basically completely covered. Right? There's there's no surface area that's that's not completely covered here. So this is these are these are pretty saturated at this point. Um so I need to clean all this stuff out. Need to change the water out and then we're going to put this in one more time. All right, and that's what the white vice looks like after the first cleaning and wire wheeling. I've got these brass uh, brush set here. I bought these all for about six bucks total at Northern Tool. Pretty good. Um, so yeah, it looks, I mean, almost finalized, right? I need to get in there a little bit more. I can't get in there very well. <laughs> But uh, I'm guessing you're probably probably wondering why why don't you just wire wheel it in the first place and not bother with all the electrolysis and stuff like that. And I can show you why right here. This is the part that wasn't under the water when I was doing the electrolysis. You can see. Can you see? You cannot get this off wire wheeling. I've been going at it and. Uh, you really need that electrolysis to, to loosen that surface rust off. Um, but after the first treatment, it looks pretty good already. You can see there's kind of a copperish tint to some of it, and that's the flash rust again. I think when I do, when I finish the second treatment, what I'm going to do is one side at a time, then coat it with the fluid film.
and just move around like that. But it's looking pretty damn good. All right, here we are, round two of the main body of the vise getting cleaned. Everything's electrically connected again. Have my piece of rebar in there this time, uh, same as when I did the dynamic jaw. Just have it kind of suspended, roughly centered, not perfectly. And I just want to see if I can get some more of that oxidation off the inside of that, uh, <clears throat> off the inside of the, uh, here's what it looks slide. like coming out the second time. Uh, just going to do the same thing again in the sink. Clean it out a little bit. Get this shot down in there. Nice. So you can see right here is still some roughness. Also right down in there. But yeah, we'll see if we can maybe buff that out or something. All right, <clears throat> gonna clean it all up. Yeah, this is still a problem here. This stuff. But other than that, just this little area here is still kind of uh, messed up. And unfortunately I can't get a wheel in there or anything to really smooth it out. Okay. So I got the inside of my, uh, where the dynamic jaw goes in, pretty clean here. If you can make that out. There we go. So what's left is actually just pitting. This is beneath the normal surface. And let's see if I can zoom, but the normal interior of this vise, you can feel grooves. Uh, basically uh, concentric groups here all around and uh, that's for the uh, or those are the machining marks and makes a nice little path for uh, the grease to flow this is also pitting so this is lower than the surface surrounding it I got the uh, the stuff that was sticking up I used just a Let's see here, what is this, a half inch? Yeah, this is a half inch chisel. And I basically just used this edge here. It's not sharp, but it's, you know, it's rigid and it's nice and flat. And it's, it's, uh, it's good enough for scraping. What I did is I just kind of scraped it like that to get a lot of that protruding material off. Because if not, it's gonna make my dynamic jaw catch and move less smoothly there. And what I'm left with is just this pitting here. That's not from the chisel, that's from, uh, that was rusted and it's basically just, it's gonna be damaged. So I just need to fill that with grease. So I got most, you can see there, still a little bit in there. There we go, that's a good picture. I can't get in there because this groove is a little bit smaller than half inch. So I can't get in there very well. And this is the smallest chisel I have. If it was a little bit smaller, I would just I would just scrape it right down the, the edge of this. But I did get all the edges. And uh, like I said, I cleaned up this back here pretty well. There's no stuff uh, sticking up anymore. And I'm pretty happy with it now. I think we can uh, we can make do with that. So this is the most critical surface. Um, so what I did is, uh, this is my drill. Basically did one of these things. There we go. Just kind of wire wheel the insert inside surface of that after I was done with the, uh, you know, scraping it with the chisel. And it's pretty flat. It's pretty good. You can hear, you can hear those grooves when I'm rubbing against it. But I think this will be good. You can see where I wire wheeled it to, how far it reaches in there. It's almost a perfect reach, like halfway right here. So I can just barely get 
the entire I'm done circuit. cleaning the uh, the inside of that slide on the main body and I just put the dynamic join to do a quick fit check it's really greasy right now but let's see if I can get this on camera it's a little awkward there we go just gonna do a quick up and down slide here uh, if I can grab it with one finger here we go all the way up all the way down and it's pretty smooth so I'm happy with that I don't feel any rough spots so that's good